Hey everybody, it's Jonathan from the Ring of Fire in Westchester County. Bid you welcome here in the bottom of Kernos. And um, this is a welcome back video. Welcome back to Heston. Uh, Heston Grohl's, they haven't had a presence here in quite a while. Um, I was the original Heston um, retailer in Westchester County. May have been even in the metropolitan New York area back in the day. And um, as a pioneer, I unfortunately took a lot of arrows in my back and eventually got rid of the brand. Uh, we're not gonna bore you with those details. Suffice to say, there were manufacturing problems, there were customer service problems, um, and they just became untenable for uh, us to deal with or wanna deal with. And so we said, Arrivederci Heston, and we moved a long way. But anyway, I am, um, I've always been impressed by features on the grill, and we've decided to move forward with it. And I'm excited about it. And as we brought the first piece in, I'm playing around with it. I'm like, man, I mean, there, there's something to be said about the way this grill is made. And that is really going to be the main part of our sales narrative. Because the old sales narrative, which was really about their colors, is no longer unique and no longer a major selling point. When we first had it, I can tell you that most of the sales that I had we're two designers selling to end users in the Hamptons, okay? Um, I don't think I dealt with one customer who was gonna use it. It was always a designer. I remember one particular one said, I want the grill, I don't care about the salamander broiler, I don't care about the hood that holds its position. It comes in a color that matches my client's outdoor pillows. So that's, uh, you know, that's how they were sold. Um, I wasn't getting serious grillers looking at it. They were running with alfresco back then. But now the color, um, the color pitch is now no longer unique because Lynx has it, alfresco has it. There are other brands that probably have it as well that I'm not thinking of right now. So now it's going to get down to what is the thing about this grill or the things, plural, that really separate it that I should shell this amount of money because they're definitely, you know, they're expensive and put this in my yard. Okay, so we're going to have um, further videos to get more granular about that. But, but the high level points, okay, that I'm going to focus on with my customers, I can tell you right now, it's not going to be this. Okay, I mean, I, it, it's cool, but it's like, I don't really, I, I had one customer who said that they use, because he had one, they used this when they were making hamburgers and they could keep their eyes on them when they were smoking um, without having to load, close the lid completely. They're, they're keeping it about like this. They have the stadium lighting on in there, and they can keep their eyes on it. Okay, I'm not going to spend $10,000 on a grill for that. But um, the things about this that are very unique and really strike a chord within me are the fact that, number one, they make the best grates in the business. I mean, these grates are ridiculous. You can see how thick they are. Um, I mean, check that out. I mean, when you have that type of width, okay, the thickness of these grates, what's going to happen? You have, you're conducting more heat, okay, as opposed to a tubular grate. You're conducting more heat to the food. It's going to cook quicker. It's going to cook more evenly. You're going to get some wild sear marks on there as well. And these are actually, and this is coming from a few folks who anyway, own the grill, they're very, very easy to clean. Very, very easy to clean. More so than tubular because when you scrape these, you're getting the whole surface. You're not getting that with the tubular uh, rounded grates. Um, the other feature on this, which they've had since day one, and was really the one that I love, is the fact that their rotisserie burner is essentially a broiler or a salamander. Most people tell me, Jonathan, I want a grill without a rotisserie, I'm never gonna use it. I've done videos about that. That's, that, is, that is not the way to think as rotisserie. When you rotisserie, it's just next level, but let's not get into that right now. You don't want to use the rotisserie, then you got a back burner over there that's wasted. So what do they do? They put it up top and they say, hey, we're going to turn our rotisserie burner really into a salamander or a broiler. And notice now Weber, okay, which, um, you know, they haven't done much with their grills in a matter of years. They relaunched the Summit series, their high-end grill, and what they do? They put, the, they put the infrared burner up top as well to make it act as a broiler. So they got the idea from these cats. Um, the other thing about it, which is interesting, is that uh, one of my customers actually has um, a Heston, which is, they don't have the trellis normal burners, it's all infrared, 
and he was able to cook on it. It wasn't just like, you know, with the alfresco, it's like zero or 1800 cremation levels. He was able to cook, because you gotta get used to it, but even the old trail, so the, so the point I'm trying to make here is kind of like the links. The infrared burners can't be dialed down to something, you know, uh, lower than nuclear temperatures. So um, I think the right setup on a 42 is to get the, um, uh, to get the three trellis burners and then get the uh, and then get the uh, the infrared on the side. So anyway, like I said, we're going to go into a lot of detail with this brand. So this is just kind of like, hey, I'm back in business with them. We're going to put our best foot forward. It's here on display, the 42. So if there are any questions, questions at rfgrills.com. You see the email address right there, and um, you know where to hit me. Come visit us if you're in the metropolitan area. Okay, and that's it. Thank you.